everybody, this is Elon from Inside Fighting, and this video is pretty much to me a martial art that I am not well versed in, but that I want to talk about because people in the comment section had brought it up. And I watched videos, I researched it, and I have my thoughts, and I always try and be positive. This martial art, at least from what I read online, is coined as one of the deadliest kung fus quite often. There's some things about it that I find hilarious. Uh, it kind of reminds me of if you took Wing Chun and you took Panan Tukan, the empty hand style of Filipino martial arts, and you had them bang and they made a baby, this might be what came out of them. Uh, but there's some things about it that I don't like too much. So let's deep dive in. Let's jump in right now and see what I came up with. Oh, by the way, it's Bakme. Pow, pow. Inside, inside fighting. Yeah, dangerous. Dangerous martial arts. Buck May, Puck May, I don't know uh, really why they spell it differently. I think that's just a translation to English kind of thing. But everywhere I looked, it was pronounced Buck, not Buck. And it's an interesting style. It definitely, right off the bat, I don't care what people say. You can judge me for this comment. Reminds me of Wing Chun. Just, they even have chain punching. I saw them using the wooden dummy. I have videos of all this stuff. So you can't deny what I'm saying. But let's just jump in. There's like this super quick one-minute video that captures the background of it. By the way, this martial art is used in the game Sifu, which kind of gives it an added bonus of coolness because people love that game. Known as Bak Mei or White Eyebrow Kung Fu is a Chinese martial art with a history shrouded in legend. Its origins are traditionally attributed to a monk named Bak Mei, who was said to be one of the legendary five elders that survived the burning of the Southern Shaolin Temple during the Qing Dynasty's persecution of martial arts. Bak Mei is believed to have synthesized his knowledge of martial arts into the white eyebrow style, emphasizing powerful strikes, close quarters combat, and deceptive techniques. While the historical accuracy is debated, Bak Mei remains an important and respected martial art with a focus on devastating strikes and practical self-defense. Well, well, well. That guy's voice was very cool. I gotta work on that. Uh sounding way cooler on these videos. I'm just going to start talking like this the entire time. Hopefully it grows my subscriber base. Anyway, look, uh, I think it's very cool that they call it white eyebrow kung fu. It kind of makes me think of Kill Bill. You know, the dude with the eyebrows that go up that are white and the long beard is a kung fu master. And I think even in that movie, the style is Buck May, if I remember correctly, but I may be completely crazy. Now, what I'll say right off the bat is I found numerous clips of Buck May a lot of them being the ones in that little short demo, but the full versions, and I started analyzing them. There are certain things about this style that are quite interesting. Number one, this is a very, very, and this is a difference from Wing Chun. This style seems to have a lot of forms from what I found. Even just on the official Buck Mei website, or Buck Mei website, I found 26 forms, 13 which were with weapons, 13 were without. Here's the thing I'm going to say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on a video of uh, this older guy right here. And I'm going to add him to the stage. And, you know, I'm just going to talk over him. Well, wrong one. Wrong one, people. But here's a form. Looking at this form, and then we'll go to the old guy. Because actually, talking about forms, they do look nice. They look like they're, you know, kind of like a mix between what you'd find in numerous other styles. And they're definitely more explosive and more powerful than the Wing Chun forms, if I'm being honest. And they don't have that weird stance that the Wing Chun forms have. There's certain things here that I don't mind as much. As, as Wing Chun. Uh, and you do kind of see these movements even like in Kempo forms. You see some assimil similarities between this and like what you would see in Kempo forms. They're obviously going for a lot of Biuji to the eyes and a lot of like clawing movements to the neck. This seems like a style. So let's look at the older guy right here. This, uh, this obviously seems to be a style that focuses heavily on self-defense from an old Kung Fu standpoint and has kind of developed... Now, what I'll say is it's really nice to see older people being able to continue doing their martial arts. When I always talk about positives and negatives about martial arts, one thing you cannot deny when people bash forms, when they bash all this stuff, is that in terms of longevity, this offers you a way to train, be healthy, focus on your breathing, focus on your power, focus on your movement alone in a very controlled way that if you train long enough, will give you an understanding of the movements you're doing. And I think there's an incredible benefit to that. This is a totally subjective statement, but this guy's clearly a little bit on the older side. I found tons of videos of old 
Bakme masters still moving beautifully. I cannot say the same about many other martial arts. Many other martial arts wear out your body. These guys are still moving really well. What I'll say here also, and great, we've watched him do, you know, forms with now weapons, forms with, uh, with his empty hand. He's jumping down on the floor and doing sexy stuff there. Um, but as you can see, he has a nice movement, beautiful movement. Okay, now, does this mean that this is effective for self-defense? No, it doesn't. But it means that you could do it later on in life, and there are definitely certain benefits to it. So what I'll say is this about those movements and about everything like that. And, you know, I know there's people who are going to say it looks like crap. I trained Kuntav Silat. And when I met Uncle Bill, I had this notion in my head that if something doesn't look biomechanically functional, that it must suck. And we kind of get caught into this issue as young martial artists. If it doesn't look the way we expect it to look, then it must be bad. And we go on YouTube and we watch videos and we criticize people or we analyze things and we criticize people. In the end of the day, how something looks is not always a direct translation to how it feels. Martial arts are not a visual sport. They're not a visual platform. They are one that has to be felt to be understood. And, and this is a really hard thing to gra grasp, right? Like I met a Sistema guy. He came kind of gave me a muscle punch to my thigh. It took me like two weeks to recover from that muscle punch. The punch did not look hard. It looked biomechanically off. It looked like, like swinging a baseball. But man, did it ever penetrate deep into the muscle. Now, I'll say this. When I trained with Uncle Bill, he just went like this, bam, right into my groin. And I peed blood. And it didn't look biomechanically correct. It didn't look like, you know, Mike Tyson punching a bag. And every movement that Uncle Bill would do on you would feel like you were being hit by, honestly, I, the way I can only explain it is like as if there was a penetrating knife that was going under the first layer and then damaging everything else behind it. It's almost like you didn't feel it where you got hit. You felt it deep inside of you, like as if he opened your skin and smashed you with a hammer. This is an old dude at the time in his 80s who was skinny, who looked awkward, kind of very much like this old guy doing the form. This is what made me think about it. So when I see a form like that, and I see someone moving and I, and I feel like there's criticism that I can make based on how they look. I haven't felt it. And what I do know for a fact is I have felt other people who have looked similar to that. And it felt honestly like I was going to die when I was being hit. I say this as a combat sports athlete, as a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, someone who's done Muay Thai for most of his life, someone who's done full contact stick fighting. I know what it feels like to get hit very, very well. But it felt different from some of these internal martial arts dudes. It, it just did. And it's not like some kind of conspiracy. It's not some kind of you know, uh, no touch knockout power. They were hitting me, but they've developed a certain kind of relaxation and breathing and movement throughout the hit. Can they apply it in a self-defense situation? I don't know. But what I will say is when I see forms like this, when I see people moving and demonstrating stuff, I am much less quick to criticize it than I would normally without having had those experiences. I know there's tons of people are going to disagree with me telling me, I don't know what I'm talking about. I do. Uh, and it's fine if you disagree. You're more entitled than entitled to disagree with me about things. Um, so let's just jump into, there's this one guy who's really popularizing on YouTube, at least, a lot of the Bakme movements and style. And he's actually the fight choreographer from the, the game Sifu. So that's very interesting because he's kind of the representative for it, I guess, at this point. He's a younger guy. He's French, which is interesting. But if we look at a lot of his movements... Kind of look like, you know, waving your hands around like a psychopath. And again, it's something that I'm from a combat sports background, even from a self-defense background, not a type of movement I'm used to. This is very much more in line with what you would see in Wing Chun. And if you saw my Wing Chun video, you would know that I was a little bit critical of it. I did give props to some of the benefits of doing things like sticky hands, Chi Sao. And I will give benefit to some of the movements I see here. I think they're very fast. I think they're very explosive. I think he has good structure. Uh, but it is not the way I would personally fight. It is not the way I would personally train. I think there are better ways to train for self-defense. I think there are better ways to train. And his name is Benjamin Kulo, so let's give him some credit. I think there are better ways to train for combat sports. I think there are are better ways to train martial arts in general. But what I will say is this, as I've discussed before, there are three tiers to training. There's self-defense, there's combat sports, and there's the art aspect of martial arts. 
Now, they give overlap to each other, but this falls in the category for me of a martial art. There's an art aspect, a cultural aspect. Does that mean it has no combat application? No. Clearly, he's developing very explosive movement. He's developing uh, good structure. He's developing movements that I'm sure that if he hit an untrained guy explosively like that would knock him down. And he's also aiming for pressure points, eyes, throats, all those sensitive areas. So sure, there's a benefit to it. I just, again, not to be overly critical, I like to be a nice guy in these things, think there's better ways to train. And again, you can disagree with me there. Uh, so let's just look at some more of and analyze those movements a little bit further. They do do some videos that kind of try and show the modernized street effectiveness of it. Some of them I very much agree with. And actually, I'm going to jump ahead and get into some of the videos that show structure. Because I think structure is very important. Now, if you look here, let's just rewind that a little bit. Showing off a punch, kind of how to develop structure to block a punch. He's going to the outside line. He's defending beautifully to the outside line. He uses the same movement. And I've actually made videos about this. Silat has very similar principles. He's getting super close. He's off-balancing the other guy. These are solid self-defense principles. His chin is coming down. He's exploding in. He's closing the gap, right? And then he's following up with a nice punch. I can't criticize this. This is not bad. This aspect of Bach made to me is fair to kind of watch and fair to say is effective and would be good to train. No problem with it. He moves very nice there. I wouldn't want to get hit by those, and I'm sure if he punched a guy. But then I see this. And this is one of his students, I think, because I saw them together in another video. But this, to me, biomechanically, and again, we talked about this, looks a little bit ridiculous. And one of the main differences that a lot of people talk about between Bak Mei and Wing Chun, but then he's getting inside here, he looks a little bit more effective. But when they're doing it without anything in front of them, like, like right here, it just, and right there, you know, what do, what, do you, what do you want me to say, guys, about what I think about that? But then when he demonstrates, he looks good. He looks good. But then he also looks like that. And uh, it looks like Bak Mei is just kind of... So they said that it's, uh, it uses more hip rotation and more hip movement than Wing Chun. But when I see them hitting, I see them doing this, like no footwork, no actual... I don't know, I'm going out, I'm getting blurry... No actual kind of sidestepping or like effective. And their arms are just whipping. like, bam, 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 bam. And it looks like one of those, those things that you did as a kid when you fought. Uh, I will say this. I'm sure that if he cracked me with those wild maniac punches that it would hurt. But I can't help but watch it and just be like, as a guy who comes from like a, a striking background where we put on gloves and we crack each other. And, and maybe that's the problem in all of this, that uh, I watch that and I go, yeah, what do you want me to say about it, folks? Now, here's them on the wooden dummy. And I like this because it shows that Wing Chun, which a lot of people believe is the only style that uses the wooden dummy, is not the only style that uses the wooden dummy. I think there's numerous applications and benefits to training with a wooden dummy. I think it's an underrated training tool. It strengthens your forms. It teaches you to parry and move. You can do gunting on it. You know, my teacher, who is a Filipino martial artist, Chris Bautista, grandson of Grandmaster Kakoi Kanyete, would uh, train with the, the wooden dummy, and there are benefits to it. It is a, a, a great additional supplemental training tool. Now, what I'm going to get out the way right away about Bak Mei is I do think that this martial art for sure has benefits as a supplemental martial art because there's certain things here you wouldn't get in traditional, and by traditional, I mean more popularized trendy styles. Let's just take Muay Thai. Let's take boxing. Let's take all the combat sports that have taken mainstream. You will not learn kind of how to parry and hit over top and do some of this trapping stuff, which is clearly a major part of the system. You also won't learn the kind of relaxation and, and snapping striking power that I believe, I suspect, as I previously said, is evident here that you can only get from, from training and develop it without using gloves. And that is something that I feel that Bakame people for sure have. As much as I was making fun of this guy, I can't help it. I got to put it back on. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's right. As much as I'm making fun of that guy, I do think that he's developed kind of like a nice, relaxed whipping power, which has benefits in certain circumstances. And we see it here from, this is the same guy, I think, Benjamin. Um, I can't remember his last name. But there is a effect, effective motion. He looks way more coordinated when he does it for some reason. I don't know why. But again, all these things involve you taking your hands away from your head and putting them at your midsection. If you look where their hands go, they, they don't stay up by their chin or by their temples. 
they're coming up hitting and then coming back down and there's a lot of hand movements that are and you see this in a lot of more traditional older styles for some reason they keep their hands by their armpits more than by their head um but look he's his movements here and he's a he's a great ambassador for this style because he's modernized it like i said his movements here look effective to me they look like they're good to train against that's a nice entry into an elbow. That is something you would see very similar in Filipino martial arts in Silat. There's overlap happening here. When I first watched this Benjamin guy, he reminded me so much of a lot of Silat guys, especially this guy, Guru uh, Kent Nelson, who used to be popularized on YouTube back in the day, who's a very good martial artist. Shout out to Guru Kent Nelson if he watches this. Uh, but he, his movements reminded me of him. He's got these very fast hands. He's stepping to the outside. He's off balancing with his shin on the other guy's foot or into the other guy's shin or foot to foot, kind of these off balancing techniques. And he's using a parry check, which is, as I've said before, the most fundamental, I would say, at least for me when I learned uh, Silat, was the most fundamental movement in, in Silat, an outside parry check. Now, let's just look at what a parry check is as we continue to watch them. I'll make myself a little bigger. Parry check is I'm going to step either on the outside or inside line, and I'm going to parry and check. This movement, parry and check. Now, one of the main things people do wrong when they parry check is they parry and check behind. My own elbow is getting in the way here of me me checking, and I can actually hurt my own arm if I do this hard. Uh, another thing that I, I like to call it is climbing the ladder because I'm going from here, and I'm climbing the ladder forward, and then I climb again forward, and then I hit. And that's the kind of starting point of a lot of huba drills, pangamo drills, and even Silat drills is this kind of parry check. And they do have a similar philosophy here, which is a good philosophy. Um, I had only one video of these guys sparring. This guy looks pretty badass to me. Um, now, again, he's just doing a form for some reason in what looks like a, a shop. And which one of us hasn't done this before? If you're not shadow boxing or doing some kind of crazy form, in public, like while you're waiting for your car or, you know, your girlfriend's doing groceries and you're in the store. If you're not doing exactly what this guy's doing, can you really call yourself a martial artist? I don't think so. I think you need to embarrass the people around you with your martial arts skills at all times. If you're not kicking street lights, if you're not out there punching the air, you and me ain't the same. So this guy, what I'll say about him is he he's the kind of guy who looks like he's generating immense force. He's also huge, but look at look at the swing in his body and the relaxation. And so, man, that would for sure hurt if it cracked you in the face. So what I'll say about it is it looks like it's an interesting style that favors getting in close, favors being relaxed, has a lot of similarities to Wing Chun, but does in fact use a little bit more of a kind of loose biomechanical structure where they're willing to shift their hips far more and step on outside lines far more. Uh, and it looks like they also use their arms like a whip more, which is something you don't find in Filipino martial arts. It is really the baby of Wing Chun and more uh, South, Southeast Asian martial arts like Silat and Filipino martial arts, like I said previously in the start of this. I'm not gonna post the sparring video. Uh, you know what? It looked bad. It looked like children doing patty cake, and there's no point in showing it because I don't think it's representative of the style. I think it's the only video I could find, and I've talked about this before. That's all I'm going to show for, for Buck May. This guy does look like he hits like a brick, though. Do I agree with his movements? Again, it's not the way I would train, but look, it is what it is. Um, so what I will say about uh, Bach May is this. it's one of those styles that I believe from what I could find online in research that doesn't really focus that much on sparring at all. It focuses a lot on forms and it focuses a lot on these two person drills where they're teaching you in singular motions how to get inside. Yes, you need to pressure test your system for it to be effective. That doesn't mean sparring. That means aliveness in any way, shape or form. That could mean putting on gloves, having someone crack you in the head and seeing if your movements work. That's not sparring. That's an actual drill. Um, you don't even need to put on the gloves. Just see if your movements work. I don't see that here. What I do see, again, is an interesting style that has certain benefits in terms of teaching you relaxation, whipping strikes, getting in close, certain body mechanics, which are effective to getting to outside and inside lines, how to explode up. And if I were to train this style, 
I would only train it with the guy who modernizes it, who teaches it in a way that it feels like a bit more close to a combative system. And that's just because I don't care about the art aspect in this martial art. It doesn't appeal to me personally. If it does appeal to you, kudos. I do thank everyone who asked me to look into it. I find it very interesting. Uh, again, it's the love child, in my view, of Wing Chun and, and Southeast Asian martial arts. And this is what came out of them. And hopefully it grows up and it makes more babies. And I can talk about those babies. But hopefully you liked this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Yeah, it got weird at the end.